How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to talk about how to safely quit your job. Now if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you'll know that I left little bits of information here and there, but never really all together in one spot like this, explaining how I did what I did. Personally, I'm pretty risk adverse. I'm not like some people who just decides, oh, I'm just going to quit and they don't have that much savings saved up, maybe 10, 20, $30,000 in the bank, and then they just up and quit and go travel the world or something. For me, and I think a lot of people are not willing to take such a risk because that is not a conventional thing that people do. People do not want to completely give up their career for something that is only a possibility. What I'm gonna describe in this video is how I personally was able to quit my job in a safe manner. Now, I've always been a pretty good saver, but not as much as right now. In my younger days, I used to save up a lot and then buy like a really, really big item and essentially blow all my money on it. So in retrospect, if I knew what I knew now and was able to apply everything ever since I started earning money, then yes, I probably would be in a better position right now. So as I continued in my engineering career, I started noticing, well, you know, this work stuff and this commuting is starting to get really old. It's starting to get really, really repetitive. Sometimes I will feel like nothing is getting done. Sometimes when I work on products, it might get canceled. Even if it's something that's released, right after you're done, they always open up a new project and go, oh, here you go. It's as if you can never finish. No matter how hard you work or how fast you work, you'll never be done with the work that they give you. Now, while I was working as an engineer, I've heard of stories of other engineers just picking up their stuff, they quit engineering. And to me, I thought, wow, you know, why would you do such a thing? I like engineering so much, I don't think I will ever quit. So at one point I heard this story where this engineer was working and he picked up his stuff, he just quit engineering and opened up his own hot dog stand. Whatever career it is, you probably hear similar stories of these rare type of people that's able to, you know, just completely change their career, do something else, and you would wonder why, why would they do something like that? At the same time, I remember eating at the hot dog place and a bunch of my coworkers were crowded around and we were daydreaming. It's like, oh yeah, you know, that would be very nice if we're able to, you know, quit our day jobs like this and do what we want to do. So as I worked over the years, I found more and more ways to cut my expenses. In other words, increase my cash flow. I cut my expenses and at the same time, I've been looking for side income sources. So my inflow keep on increasing, my outflow keep on decreasing. This is probably what lowered the activation energy for me because when you quit a job, it's a big event. There's a lot of friction and obstacles preventing you from doing this. If your expenses are high, like if you have a car payment, house payment, student loan, credit card payment, whatever, if you have loads of these, it just means there's no way you're gonna ever be able to quit because it's gonna be that much harder to make that much passive income to be able to cover all those expenses. In my case, I go and kill each one of those financial drainers. The first thing I ever paid off was my car loan. Then I concentrated on my student loan and I just kept on attacking it. You know, I talked about me, Whenever I have a beer, I like just put like a couple hundred dollars into it just for fun. Eventually I had no other outflows in terms of loans and I try to reduce my recurring expenses, my cell phone bill, internet bill, whatever kind of bill, I try to minimize those. And through this reduction of expenses and increasing side income, then I was much easily able to just go, oh, look at this. My side income sources kind of covers my daily expenses already. This means I can just up and quit my job and not have to worry about bringing in any income. So when are you actually ready to quit? When you actually reduce your income, you can see how this can make things easier and it can make the time at which you quit your job earlier and earlier. The more side income sources that you bring in, of course, the more that you bring in, the earlier that you can also quit your job. So you're kind of working on this on two fronts here. And when they meet, that's when you can quit. When you work on your side income sources or passive income sources, you also have to look at how much you actually bring in. Sometimes when you do side income sources, they're not very consistent, not like a paycheck. It goes up and down, up and down. So one of the rules I looked at is that if you have a consistent amount of side income and this meets your burn rate already, and if you can do this for three months in a row, then you can start thinking about, okay, you might just be ready to quit your job. However, I did not quit right when my income sources met my burn rate for three months in a row. I just thought, I wanted more buffer room. I wanted a larger margin of safety just in case my side income sources just go down for some reason because maybe it might be a fluke. Maybe I made more for some weird reason for those three months. So I actually waited much longer and looking back, I feel like, yeah, you know, this is about 
the right time to quit for me personally because it made me feel all that much more comfortable and right now i feel all that much better because there's such a large margin of safety that i'm not like looking behind my back all the time and just kind of being worried about everything oh i'm gonna bring in enough youtube income you know just to support my daily life so it's no secret people ask me during my channel gatherings like oh what are your side income sources well the main one is youtube the other one is passive income sources from dividends i don't have any rental income simply because i hate trying to be a landlord i don't want to look over stuff i don't want them to call me and then go oh you know you gotta fix the toilet you gotta do this or that to me it's just a time sink and it's just something not for me so that's a safe way for you and you'll see on youtube there's a lot of people that just kind of go oh you know i quit and then they don't have any solid plan it's usually just some youtube video just saying they quit their job but then there is nothing waiting for them on the other end they don't have another job lined up they don't actually have um, all that much side income sources they just kind of maybe have some savings and they're just gonna go oh you know just see what happens some people quit their job without any side income sources passive income sources and they travel the world how is it funded most of the time it's funded by their emergency savings they just save this up through their normal job so they're not going to be able to keep this up it's not sustainable they cannot do this forever let's say and that is the point here you want to be able to make that transition to be able to transition into it and not have to you know trace backwards and then find the same job again and then just go back to work some people do that they go and work somewhere they quit they travel for a year or two and then they come back and they work some more maybe six months one year to save up enough funds and then they go travel again so in my situation i've set it up so that it's more like a perpetual thing where my burn rate it's like this slow and then my side income sources or you know much higher than that so that i can feel a little safe because i'm saving up money still because you're gonna always have like emergency situations maybe if my car breaks down or something then i have to buy a brand new car maybe there will be other situation medical situations or something where i will need you know a good amount of money to able to cover those things so what happens now now that i quit my job basically I don't set my alarm anymore. I wake up anytime I want. I avoid traffic like the plague, so I do not drive anywhere between 7 and 10.30 a.m. and as well as 2.30 to about 7.30 p.m. over here in the Bay Area. That's when traffic starts. I do my errands in the afternoon in between those traffic hours, so usually between 10.30 and 2.30 p.m. During this time, it's really, really great. You go outside, there's very, very few cars on the road. You're gonna spend really, really little time going from point A to point B. When you're actually in the store, there's actually very few people, and yet a lot of people are working to give you service. If you happen to go to the movies around this time, there's no one there as well. So you basically have the whole theater to yourself. Everything just seems a lot easier. So you save a lot of time doing what you need to do anyway. And not to mention, if you're not wasting time standing in line all the time, you're saving your time, which is sort of like saving your life. You're using your life hours doing the stuff that you want to do. So I can go out, finish my thing, come back, and then I can do what I want to do. I have more time to do that. When I go travel, and I've already demonstrated this already, I can go for an extended period of time. Whereas if you're working for a job and you try to get vacation for more than two weeks, they're gonna cringe on this. I know even when I ask for one week of vacation, there's a lot of friction involved. It's like, oh, you know, we're really busy right now. We're not too sure. And if you have three weeks vacation, you're allowed to do this three times. So if you just do this, vacation one whole week vacation every four months you're gonna go you know this is weird this is too much vacation if you if you take your vacation up to the amount of vacation that you have every single year it will feel like you're slacking at work almost anyhow being able to travel longer for example i went to hong kong and tokyo for six total weeks and on top of this i'm not really trying to save time during my air travel so when you only have two three weeks a year of vacation you tend to want to do the direct flights you don't want to waste any time going from point a to point b but for me i'm like i don't really care i have my laptop i can be mobile i can do my work anywhere i want i can essentially do it on a plane i can do it at an airport or whatever it's just me kind of being location agnostic therefore this means i can get any plane ticket i want including the cheap ones this in turn also saved me money because i don't have to pay as much for my plane tickets the last point of me quitting my job is essentially i have a lot more time doing what i want to do i have a lot of tiny little side project little crazy things that may not earn me any money but let me tell you after i tackled a lot of these i personally just feel 
like fulfilled. I'm like, there's that itch I want to scratch. And having been able to do that, it sort of frees my mind. Imagine it's like a big cloud in your mind, right? And you have this thing that you want to do. It's just there. It's taking up room. It's always just hanging around. And I remember when I was working, there's always these little tasks that I want to do that just hangs around. They would hang around for years and I cannot have time to be able to get rid of them. I don't have time to uh, look into them. Even when it takes really, really little time um, by the time you actually go and do it. The reskinning of the star cube was exactly that for me. That is something I just thought of. It's really random thing. When I do something like that, it's not that I'm running out of ideas, but it's something that I want to pursue. It's like on the top of my list. I want to do that. Therefore, I went to do that. Now going forward, of course, my other little side project is of course, reduce the stuff that I have. I'm personally, uh, I definitely am not an extreme minimalist, but you know, I'm getting there. I'm trying to be more minimal. I've gotten rid of some stuff that I've kept for many, many years and being able to minimize. I think this will really open doors for me in the future to be able to just have less stuff. If I just want to be more mobile, move around or anything. So thanks for this little chat and I hope you enjoyed this video. Not everyone have to pick up their stuff, quit their job and just say, oh, forget everything. I'm just going to go travel the world. You can do this in a safe manner, in a organized and safe manner. Don't forget to give me a like on this video. Comment down below. Let me know if you are trying to plan such a thing as well. If you're interested in supporting my channel, check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. And if you don't like this audiobook or this service, you can cancel it before the subscription expires and you can still keep this audiobook for free and still help benefit this channel. I also have a Patreon over here if you're interested in getting early access to my videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel over here and click that bell icon next to that subscribe button so that you get a new notification whenever I upload a brand new video. Thanks for watching.